got that. Yeah, so um, I was brought up um, as an Anglican, um, but uh, since um, a young age, when I became aware of God and uh, uh, aware of good and, and bad, um, for some reason or the other, I was always uh, inspired to follow good and to follow the things of, of God or a God, which is good, the God of the Bible. And um, um, I was very convicted and steered uh, in that direction. I uh, became a very uh, religious young man. Um, you know, went to church a lot and Sunday school. Um, in the Anglican Church, I used to belong to the Church Lads Brigade, and uh, so, so forth. And um, um, got confirmed there. Um, I was uh, christened as a little baby, or so I was told. And um, until I went into my teenage years um, and um, started partaking of the things of the world, trying this out and that out. You know, not really um, going into it very heavily, but uh, experimenting and being naughty with cousins and school friends and things like that. Uh, um, but amazingly, through all those years, um, this conviction and in this inspiration to wanting to follow the Lord, you know, um, just grew stronger and stronger within me until I came to the age of uh, 21 and... Um, I think before my 21st birthday already, I stopped smoking. Um, but on my 21st birthday, um, you know, we're celebrating it with obviously with the wine and beers and whatever. Um, I said to myself, this is going to be my last beer. And um, I'm going to pack up everything. And um, I went to some lady uh, from um, a Pentecostal movement and uh, thinking that they had the way to salvation. And uh, because they were a little bit different to the Anglican church that I went to, they didn't drink, they didn't smoke, um, people didn't swear in their church, and they were a little bit more committed. I've heard about maybe one or two miracles, so that was their reputation. And um, I, I believe that they had the way to salvation, and they went there, um, and went there for about two years, and still trying to make a accomplishment. And um, I was really sort of like what it says in Galatians, being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine because, because I think I was seeking for the Lord, you know, and the things of the Lord, I would go all over the place and here and there and just trying to soak things in, um, but with no real direction and not even receiving the Holy Spirit. Up to that point, the time I thought I did, sense of very self-righteous, and um, until I met up with the Revolver Fellowship, and I won't go into all the details how we met and so forth, but uh, these people, actually of the fellowship, it was Revolver Centers in those days, and uh, these people opened the Bible to me and um, said to me that I still needed to receive the Holy Spirit, and I just couldn't believe it, and um but because they um, sort of showed me the Bible and, and uh, in its proper context, they went to the Old Testament, into the New Testament and, and so forth. And I couldn't otherwise but to believe because, believe it because the Bible said so due to my commit commitment to the Lord. And with the realization that I never received the Holy Spirit, I was very dis disturbed within myself, uh, very disillusioned, very disappointed. And um, with that meeting, I immediately asked him, look, um, you're going to have to pray with me to receive the Holy Spirit and, and speak in other tongues. And eventually they did. Um, I actually was prompted to stop them talking and start praying with, with me so desperate I was. And uh, for about two weeks um, after hearing these things, I really, really started seeking the Lord for the Holy Spirit and to speak in other tongues. And, um, um, but never received because I guess because I was upset inside of myself, the turmoil inside of me and uh, so forth. And uh, when things started settling down, praise the Lord that I went into my room just before I went to sleep again uh, one evening and um, lo and behold, the day of the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit. Nobody told me that I did. 
received the Holy Spirit, I just knew it because I spoke in other tongues. And uh, since then, I've been coming to the, the fellowship. Um, in the process of time, it so happened that um, things started happening in South Africa and Pastor Ron um, came over to South Africa. And uh, sort of automatically, we um, were very evangelic, if you'd like to call it that way, and sort of teamed up because uh, things just started. Yeah, and uh, in the process of time, he saw, saw it fit for me to start uh, uh, baptizing people. And uh, I looked at, at it and, and uh, considered it and so forth. And I went to him because I was baptized in this Pentecostal movement. And uh, I said to him, look, um, I, I think if we're going to do this, then we're going to have to do it right. If I'm going to baptize people, then I think I, I'm also going to have to be uh, baptized again. Um, to his delight, we went to the beach that evening, lovely evening, and uh, he baptized me in the, in the sea. And um, um, amazingly, when we came out of the water, uh, he just said to me out of nowhere, uh, if the Lord asks you why you got baptized again, then you just tell the Lord, uh, not of your mistake, Lord, but, you know, my mistake. And that was a concern to me. And uh, amazingly, without me even speaking about it, he came to me, and that was really, really comforting to me. And uh, I said that since then, I've been coming to this assembly, and um, uh, praise the Lord, many things happened um, for uh, past 30, 32 years. And I can certainly praise the Lord that he has kept me in the palm of his hand, and I can just hope uh, to continue until he returns. Amen.